All right. With that heavy introduction, we're going to do something that's uh, a little more out of the box since I'm uh, at the uh, uh, CEO level of a company, which is a real pain in the ass kind of a role. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the things that I worry about all day long, which is the big picture. So my micro talk is really about a macro uh, situation. Uh, which is the overall creative industries in Austin, to try to give you a little bit of a perspective of where we fit in and where the industry is as a whole. Uh, before I launch into this, how many of you have been in Austin for five years or less? Raise your hand. Wow, quite a good number of you. How about 10 years or more? How many have been here 10 years or more? Okay, very good. Well, that gives me some idea of uh, how much of this you may know and how much of, you, uh, how much of it you may not. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, the creative industries in Austin, uh, but first let's start by defining what the creative class is these days. And it's people who, in addition to great artists like Dennis Lubay and uh, musicians and designers, uh, the people you usually come to associate with creativity, it also includes scientists and innovators of a, a broad variety. Uh, this segment of the U.S. population was less than 10% just 100 years ago. And now, uh, with the 2010 census, it's projected to be somewhere over 40%. Uh, and the most important thing is that the wealth generated by this creative class is actually half of all the wage and salary income in the United States these days. Where did Austin's creative class come from and why? Well, it came to be in the 1960s, and it, uh, this town had its genesis, uh, as many of you know who have been here for a while, uh, in government and academia. It's was generally a pretty boring and laid back town. Uh, but then music invaded in the uh, 60s. Uh, and it came here because of the college scene. And uh, this is where the Armadillo World Headquarters started up in the 70s. And that's where the uh, hippies and the cowboys all mixed together, the uh, cosmic cowboys as that uh, generation was called. And where the musicians are very often other creatives follow. And uh, that gave rise to the early stages of the creative industry. Why did Origin come here? Well, I came here with Origin from Microprose uh, back in the late 80s, and uh, what brought me here was my two partners, uh, still to this day, Richard Garriott up there in the upper left-hand corner, Lord British, and uh, Dallas Snell, uh, a much younger version of Dallas there, uh, who has always been our head of product development. And they came here, we were originally, uh, we started in Houston, we ended up in New England, but uh, everybody felt that it was just too cold and unfriendly there, and uh, the weather was better here, the girls were better here, the economics were better here, and the vibe was better here, so we came here. And uh, we uh, had a very collaborative, open uh, working scene, had lots of uh, 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 apprenticeships going, and uh, basically a lot of people working for free, because uh, we were a, still very much in a startup mode. Dennis was actually you know, one of the first 20 people in the, in the company, probably one of the first 10, maybe even the first five, preceded me by a little bit there. And uh, we really gave genesis to, the, uh, to what is, has been the game industry uh, in Austin at that time. We found that lifestyle matters for the creative class, and uh, Austin has got lifestyle in spades. You know, that's everything from uh, the, uh, the environmental uh, scene, the sports scene, the, uh, the, the music and cultural scene. In this new economy of the creative class, uh, what we demand is things like cafes and bars and places to socialize and be with people, not stadiums and malls and, and uh, things of the old economy. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a fellow who wrote the book, uh, The Rise of the Creative Class, uh, Professor Richard Florida, and he actually has even measured uh, this, uh, this uh, thing that he calls the Bohemian Index, uh, that he measures in, in cities across the country, and Austin is uh, one of the highest ranked in having the, uh, the culture of cool, as you might call it. In creative DNA, there's a, there's a real uh, 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 defined uh, set of circumstances that goes on, and it has to do with clustering. Where creative people are, they like to cluster in economic units. It starts out in basements, in, in attics, in people's living rooms. It grows out of that into compounds, becomes districts, and eventually can become companies. Uh, and in places like Austin, we have a lot of neighborhoods that are very conducive uh, to, uh, to the, the creative vibe of different areas, you know, whether it's South Austin or downtown or the drag or East Austin. I mean, that's where there's a lot of creative buzz. And when it grows large and becomes sort of uh, uh, mainstream, it goes out to the domain and the arboretum. Uh, for those of you who work out there, you know what I'm talking about. 
So uh, the growth of the Austin creative industries, uh, again, it started with music, uh, uh, which actually has a very deep history in Austin all the way back to the uh, Chitlin circuit uh, and, and the early uh, years here in this town. Grew in the 70s with clubs and then in the 80s with South by Southwest. Film came on uh, with the creation of the Texas Film Commission in 71. Uh, then in the 80s, the Austin Film Society came around and then uh, South by Southwest added film in the mid 90s. And on the tech side, uh, again, that actually started over in, a, in, a, in the opposite side of tech is where we are. Of course, we're, we do things with computers you're really not supposed to do, which is have fun. Uh, they, they've always been designed to be work machines, as we know, uh, by IBM and uh, 3M and uh, the semiconductor companies and so forth. Uh, in the 80s, again, Origin kind of planted itself here and, and spawned a, a whole lot of uh, uh, other new companies. And then uh, South by Southwest started what was originally their multimedia uh, uh, festival, which became the interactive uh, uh, shortly thereafter. And uh, then the Austin Game Conference, which is now uh, uh, Austin GDC, comes up in September. So those are really the, the, uh, the sectors themselves. The numbers now speak for themselves in terms of uh, what the economic impact is of these different segments. Uh, if you look at these numbers that I've got up here, uh, 600 million plus for music, uh, 360 million, that was a, back in the, in, the, in the peak days of film in the mid-2000 uh, uh, era. It's uh, come off of that lately. Uh, those are some pretty big numbers. The game industry is much smaller at this point still. And we've got a, a set of issues here that uh, I'm gonna launch into next year that'll give some context to where we're stuck and what our problem is and what we need to do about it. Uh, but all in all, Austin without question is hot. It's number one on pretty much every ranking, everywhere, all the time. You read about it all the time. Uh, in, in, and we have a real global brand here and that's attracting, as I see, lots of you here from all over the country and, and from other parts of the world. So the question is, where do we go from here? Uh, the three things that we need for economic development in the creative sectors are talent, tolerance, and technology. I think you can argue that, uh, that Austin has all three of those things in spades, so we've got a great foundation uh, to work off of. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got great climate, we've got great economics compared to either coast, uh, no state income tax. Uh, we're centrally located to both coasts and to Asia and Europe. Uh, and uh, we've got you know, solid creative talent in all uh, areas that, uh, that we would need to expand in, and we have a liberal and open-minded culture here. But we also have some challenges in Austin. Uh, you know, some of it is perception and some of it is fact. Uh, from uh, you know, a, a lot of people's perspectives, things that, uh, that take place in Texas having to do with guns and religion and George W. and uh, Waco and six, Secession, uh, you know, that worries folks, and, and they don't understand necessarily that Austin is a microcosm unto itself, really a piece of California perhaps transplanted into the, into the center of Texas. Uh, but uh, we've got some issues here that we have very little capital in this town to grow industries with. Uh, UT is not very well engaged in this community. ACC, St. Ed's do a far, far better job, especially in our uh, game sector, uh, of, of engaging and, and helping to build talent and, and uh, the needed skills that we uh, have here. And we have few publishers and headquarters based here, uh, ostensibly in, uh, in, in the work that we did with Origin and with NCSoft, those were a couple of the only headquarter companies that actually did their own publishing and counted the top line uh, revenue dollars here in Austin, not in California or Korea or New York or in London somewhere. So we've got some work to do. Uh, the competition is fierce out there from other mid-tier cities like us around the country, as well as established cities like San Francisco, LA, and New York. New York in particular is very aggressively uh, building its creative sector right now, has its own uh, venture capital fund even to attract uh, uh, creative companies to its city. I like to use San Francisco as a, as a target for comparison, that Austin is really San Francisco probably 50 years ago. And, uh, you know, we can take some lessons from some of the things that they do there that I'm gonna buzz through really quickly because I'm at the two minute mark here already, well into it. Uh, I'd say that we and San Francisco share creative industries, technology and quality of life pretty comparably. We have them beat by cost of living considerably as those of you who have lived out there know. We both have major universities. There are, theirs are much better engaged, Stanford and, uh, and uh, uh, Berkeley in their private sector uh, activities and in their capital community, and they have a lot of financial capital that we do not have. So in terms of some action items, 
Mergers and acquisitions, I'm here to say, having done it twice now, uh, are losing propositions. It takes about 10 years or less, and the companies that we create here get shut down. Uh, my, my view is to stop recruiting new companies from out of town and continue to build those companies that have started here and want to grow here and put more money to work on the people that we've got in our community. We have 39,000 small businesses in Austin. That's a great resource to, uh, and, and a fertile resource to, uh, to add to. Uh, we've got to better engage the University of Texas and get them involved in the work that we're doing here. Uh, take some lessons from San Francisco uh, and Silicon Valley where they have things like the V-Lab and Singularity University and the Y Combinator and 20 under 20 programs. I can explain all those to you if you want to know. Email me or talk to me afterward. And we need more capital in this town. We have about 12 sources of capital in Austin. There's about 50 major VCs in the uh, Silicon Valley area, plus a host of boutique firms. We just raised $3.6 million with our firm. We had to go to London and to San Francisco to find it. We couldn't find it here at home. So anyway, that's uh, what I want to tell you about. This is just a list of some of the things that are going on in this town that if you don't know everything that's on this page, please become familiar with it. Uh, uh, be happy to send it to you. Those are all the places where you find jobs, you do the networking that others have talked about here uh, to get yourself connected, and this is how we will grow the creative industries in our town right here at home. Thank you.